Hey everybody, welcome back. As I'm sure you know by now, Sim Update 2 has been released for Flight Simulator 2024. This is going to be rather impromptu, but I just want to give you guys some information about some things that I've come up that I've come across and picked up being a member of the beta for the past couple months. There's some things that we need to do to make sure that we get the best performance out of it. And so we'll go through all that real quick here, starting with the driver. So first of all, the latest version is 576.40, and Microsoft Flight Simulator is actually mentioned in the release notes for this driver. Um, and it's also mentioned in, uh, you can see right here, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. And Microsoft itself, or Sobo themselves, have mentioned to update to this driver. One of the advantages of using the NVIDIA app for your drivers is if you have a problem with a particular driver, it's gonna keep the driver that you had installed previously right here at the bottom. Just come over here, click on the three dots and click on reinstall. You can roll back your driver in two seconds. There is improved support for 50 series graphics cards and the multi-frame generation with this latest driver. There are some things in the release notes for this latest driver about new DLSS overrides available for Flight Sim 2024. I haven't seen any of them in the settings here, but I'm also not a 50 series card user. So perhaps if you have a 50 series card, there are more options for you here. So the one thing I, I do use personally is the DLSS, DLSS super resolution. And I just set it here to latest, which is preset K. I'll go in a little bit more detail into frame gen and what I've been using here in a minute, but uh, I would definitely update your driver to the latest NVIDIA driver now that Sim Update 2 is out. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, there is a new frame gen option in Flight Sim 24 with Sim Update 2. And that is FSR3 frame generation. That's a software-based frame generation as opposed to DLSS frame generation from NVIDIA, which is hardware-based. And what this means for us is that if you have a NVIDIA card or an AMD card, you can use the AMD frame generation in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. I'll show you that here in a second, but the first thing we wanna do, here's DLSS Swapper, we know that NVIDIA or that uh, Asobo loves rolling back our DLSS files every time they update the SIM and they've done so again this time. So come into DLSS Swapper, make sure you swap back out to 3.10.2.1, which is the latest version. If you have a 40 or 50 series RTX graphics card, make sure you swap your frame generation file as well. I do it anyway. I don't know actually if this this file has an effect if you're using the frame gen mod for a 30 or a 20 series card, but there's no reason not to just swap it out. It takes two seconds. The new thing is swapping out this FSR 3.1 file right here. If you click on that, they have just rolled this back for me. And as you can see, they roll it back to a version that is pretty old. I mean, this is this is what, five or six versions ago. This newest version 3.1.4 came out two or three days ago. Now there's no coincidence that this FSR3 file and the NVIDIA driver came out within the last couple days. And now we have Sim Update 2. It's clear to me that Asobo is coordinating all of this stuff with these different with these different companies, and that's fantastic. Make sure you swap out swap this out as well. If you've got a down arrow next to it and you're not able to swap it out, so I'm just gonna swap it real quick, but let's say that you have a down arrow like this next to your 3.1.4 file, what you wanna do is just close these, come over here to the library, and then come down, and you want this FSR 3.1 DirectX 12, and let's say it's, you can see again here, you've got this down arrow, just click on that download arrow, and it's gonna download it and then come back here, click on this, and then it's gonna be available for you to swap out. In particular, if you've been using AMD FSR3 frame gen in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 from Sim Update Beta 2 to the actual Sim Update 2, you are gonna notice a, a big performance degradation if you don't swap that FSR3 file out. So make sure you do all of those, the DLSS files and the FSR3 file, 
Now coming here into the sim itself, there's some interesting things going on. First of all, obviously we've got the marketplace and uh, that's actually quite cool. Got your library here. You have to sometimes disable things like I've done here. That's probably for a different video, but you can wind up kind of streaming scenery on top of other scenery in certain cases. So be careful about that because that will give you a performance hit, believe it or not. But the, the more interesting things about the settings, if we come here to the general settings and our graphic settings, now for frame generation, we have AMD FSR 3. So if you are a 40 or 50 series card user, you can just use the NVIDIA DLSS frame gen. It's probably gonna be better with your 40 or 50 series card. But the cool thing is, for those of us with 30 or 20 series cards, like I have a 3080 Ti, I do have the frame gen mod set up, which is why I have NVIDIA DLSS frame gen, but that does require updating. It does require some setup. I know some people have difficulty with that, aren't able to get it working for, for a variety of reasons. If that's the case for you, you can now simply use the AMD FSR 3 frame gen. Like I said earlier, the difference between the DLSS frame gen from NVIDIA and the AMD FSR 3 frame gen from AMD is that the NVIDIA frame gen is hardware based. It runs off of your GPU, whereas the AMD frame gen is software based, which means that we can use the AMD frame gen for any graphics card, including any NVIDIA graphics card. I haven't really tested to see which one the DLSS or the AMD has less ghosting, has less this, has less that, or, you know, better performance, whatever. So if you weren't able to get the frame gen mod working, or you just don't feel like updating it anymore, you can use this and it's really, really good. The thing that I have done in my user CFG file, I have limited my frame rates to 30 and then I've enabled this to give me a two times frame rate and that brings me up to 60 which is my monitor refresh rate before and I did a video about this uh, a couple weeks ago before what I was doing is I had limited my frames to 60 and then I was using frame gen so I was actually generating 120 frames per second but I couldn't see them I was only you know you could only see 60 so you're, I was generating more than I needed to be generating now I'm generating 30 using frame gen to double it and that works perfectly. The next big thing in my mind for Sim Update 2 Beta is this. If we come back here actually into settings, come here to controls, and this is truly a moment of pure joy and delight, in my opinion. Come here to your keyboard, click here and search the word quick. And what you have here is quick pre-flight. And I have that set to shift plus C. What this does is it skips the walk around. So when you load into a flight and you hit shift plus C, you just jump right into the airplane. Hallelujah, saints be praised. Thank you, Asobo, for doing this. I, I don't mind the feature itself. What I do mind is it being required. So here we are loaded into the sim. You just click here, ready to fly, and then click shift C. Voilard, no more walk around. Fantastic stuff. So what else can you expect from Sim Update 2? The performance is much, much better compared to Sim Update 1. Uh, both in VR and in 2D, the performance is greatly improved. To me, we're now at a point where it's definitely time to start migrating over to Flight Sim 24 from Flight Sim 2020. In particular, now that we have the PMDG 777, we also have the Piper Warrior and the Piper, the other PA-28 models from the Piper that Just Flight just released the other day. Now we've got some really, really high quality GA airplanes. We've got some really, really high quality jets. The reality is that Flight Sim 24 is now the place to be, in my opinion. I would definitely recommend giving it a try if you have it and kind of have gone back to 2020 out of various frustrations or if you haven't given 2024 a try at all if you've never bought it i can tell you with with quite a bit of confidence right now that 2024 is is the place to be going forward and 
Now the Sim Update 2 is out and I can do group flights in Sim in Flight Sim 24. The number of time I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna dis uh, I'm not gonna uninstall Flight Sim 2020, but the amount of time that I spend using it, which is already pretty minis minuscule at this point, is gonna get less and less and less. And I really expect that people are gonna be migrating over at this point. So. Anyway, there's just a couple uh, couple housekeeping tips for you there to get you started with Flight Sim 24, Sim Update 2. Hope everybody's doing well. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, etc., please leave them in the comment section below. I hope everybody's doing well, and we'll talk soon.